Somebody get who got some lemon? I need some lemon. <laughs> I'm Kiara Lachey and Kate P. You are now listening to the Perfect Couple Podcast. We are far from perfect. Psych. <laughs> But as high school sweethearts, we do know a thing or two about having a dope relationship and building generational wealth, all while raising three daughters and being social media famous. In our podcast, we'll discuss everything pertaining to marriage, intimacy, family, fitness, and balancing life in general. Oh, and our crazy journey of how we went from eating dried tuna squares in crusty motels to being CEOs of several multi-million dollar brands. So sit back and enjoy the conversation. Hi, baby. What's up, gorgeous? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm phenomenal. I completely messed up our intro just now. It was perfect. You think so? Mm-hmm. Hi, guys. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the... Perfect Couple Podcast. Where we do what? Talk. Yes, but we talk <laughs> about... <laughs> Welcome to the Perfect Couple Podcast. I'm yeah. your girl, Kiara Lachey, and... Kate. We talk about relationship things, you know, we talk about our relationship, we something like a vet in a relationship, you know what I mean, we've been together since we were tiny tots, business, we talk, yep, we know a little bit about that too, we know a lot about that, don't, don't do that, we know, it was supposed to be, you know, I was trying to be humble, no, (laughs) we built multi-million dollar businesses from the ground up, Uh, humility is still a necessity, and operating in gratitude, yes, uh, but we do. We definitely know about business. We know about parenting because we have three little beautiful girls. Mm-hmm. Professional father. Yes, a veteran mom, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and we talk about family, mm-hmm. all the things. We talk about things that happen in our culture, community. Yes. Um, we we may get a little political from time to time, but we try to keep it more based in the, uh, you know, just what's good for our community without getting too crazy about it. We talk about how to have an attain a healthy relationship Mm -hmm. um and maintain it and maintain it we talk about all the things so let's let's just get into it thank you for everybody that's just tuning in just Mm -hmm. you know learning about us we appreciate you coming through and then of course everybody that has been supportive of us since the very beginning we appreciate that as well so let's get right into it oh we talk about health and fitness too of course Uh, like all the time all right so let's get into it. We're going to talk about our week. Tell me about your, your week, babe. How has it been so Did, far? Didn't we film this week? No. Or was that last week? That was last week, Ble- honey. We be bleeding together. <laughs> <laughs> this is Every week is, is rough. This has been a kid's week for me, dealing with school. Yeah. A lot of school stuff this week. Yeah. A couple of good meetings. We started yeah. moving to the right direction. We got some good news from... Uh, one of our businesses Mm -hmm. and our finances so we like it's been a it's been a solid week Mm -hmm. a lot of work next week is probably going to be a little bit worse um as far as filming Um, not fitness but we got a lot of content we got to get oh yes 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 so your week has just been kind of boring though basically all my weeks are boring okay uh let's talk about my week (laughs) My week has pretty much been work, too, this week. I've been working a lot and helping with homeschool as well, where I can. And, yeah, our week has been kind of boring. Mine, too. That's the way I like it. I don't like a boring week. Mm. But we definitely opposites on that. I don't mind a boring week because we don't get too many of them. Well, but we are going to go to, we're going to be celebrating my uncle's birthday Yes, tomorrow. we have a busy weekend. We have a busy weekend, so I'm excited about that. So, happy early birthday. Shout out to my uncle, Fred. And y'all got to excuse my voice. I was a little sick last weekend. Oh, you were. That's right. I'm much better now, though. You feeling better? Yeah. I cooked a lot this week. Yes, which are definitely weeks I like. But let me tell y'all what he did to me. <gasps> so, I made him a nice plate. It wasn't huge. It wasn't small. It wasn't... It was like a if it was the Goldilocks and the Three Bears, it was just right, in my opinion, the plate, the size of the food, you know, amount. And he's going to tell me, because his stomach was hurting later on, he's going to tell me that I caused him to have a full stomach. His you gave stomach me too was much food. Stuffed. You gave me too much food. Who is in control of how much they eat? You put it on the plate. I can't just leave it on the plate. So then I said, okay, then I just won't cook anymore. No, that's a lie. We're not doing that. 
So don't complain. Like, what I kind of complain. complaint I, is but that? But that wasn't a complaint. I was just letting you know you gave me too much food and my stomach was hurting afterwards. It wasn't Tell, a complaint. What do y'all think about that? Because that's just, that doesn't make sense. Adrian, is that a complaint? I was just stating what that's happened. That's a complaint. It doesn't make sense. Just don't eat all what? of it. Wrap. She put it on but the plate, But you can put though. it as a to-go. Like, you can to-go. As a to-go in my <laughs> like own house. Where you going? In your own house. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. No. You could put it in Tupperware and eat it later. But you put it on the plate. I mean, his stomach was hurting for real. Like, stuffed like a pig. Because you put it on the plate. Anyway, we're not doing this. So you I guys, told her medium. She gave me extra large. This sounds like a complaint to me. <laughs> it's not a complaint. You know how many you know how many men would love for a woman to make them a plate almost every night? I cook for I'm you sure all the time. Them. But I was just letting you know so the next time you make the plate, it wasn't too they big. There ain't going to be no next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going I'm to uh, order uh, Uber Eats for you. <laughs> Don't do that. Not in Houston. <laughs> Don't do that. No, thank you. So, yeah, I've been cooking a lot this week, this past week. Oh, I did a live for Instagram. Just one? I did. Well, I'm talking about as far as cooking. I did a live for Instagram. Oh, yeah, you did. You did I you cooked did. on live, so that was cute. I did, I think what I made was the meatballs and fettuccine, like a garlic parmesan fettuccine Alfredo type vibe with some string beans on the side. So All of it was phenomenal. That was pretty good. Um, so hopefully like if you guys are interested in that, make sure to go to my Instagram and find that video somewhere. And buy a cookbook. Yeah. Oh yeah. We got the, a whole cookbook. We definitely have a whole cookbook. It's called Vegans Don't Eat Just Lettuce. So make sure y'all check that out because it is a very uh flavorful cookbook for vegans. We mm-hmm. have all types of recipes in there, like the vegan Salisbury steak, the infamous <laughs> <laughs> wife swap meal. That's what I should title it now. And then we have uh, our homemade pizza, which is really good. We have lasagna. We have homemade bread pudding. Shoot, it's yeah. the homemade bread yep. and homemade bread, bread pudding. pudding. Yep. Um, the blue, uh, the pancakes. Oh uh, yeah, fluffy pancakes. Those were really good. So, anyways, there's lots and lots of recipes that you guys should check out on our cook- in weekend. our cookbook. You can go to teamlachey.com for that cookbook. Um, I try to put it on Amazon at some point. Oh yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah, okay. let's do that. Because a lot of people were asking about it from the wife swap situation. So we're going to do that. All right. Now, before we get into is there anything else you want to talk about with your week, babe? Nope. All right. Before So before we get into the, the nitty gritty of this episode, we have to go back and answer one of our speak on it questions that we did not get a chance to address in our last episode. So KP is going to read it again. And then we're going to be able to talk mm. about it and give our advice. So speak on it for those who don't know the speak on it segment. Usually we do it towards the end of our show, but we want to answer. We, we want to make sure we get to this because we didn't have a chance to last time. We had a lot to say on the last episode, right? Yeah. And so we didn't get a chance to address it. But usually we go, we put that towards the end. But speak on it for those who don't know is a segment where we basically – uh, our listeners and our viewers, they write their story, they share their stories and they ask us for advice and we give it to them the best way we can. And if we don't have any answers and we say we don't have the answers. Mm-hmm. So go ahead. All right. So we don't give no names on this. y'all. So first yes, we of, do. If they want their name. Oh, if on they there. want their name. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't <laughs> see no name. So <laughs> first of all, let me just say that I absolutely love your podcast and I really hope you can give me some advice. Thanks, boo. I've been in a loving relationship with my spouse for some time now, but I find myself struggling with strong negative feelings toward my his children from a previous marriage. I don't have any children of my own. And to be quite honest, I don't really want any. The kids are not as well behaved as I would like. And I feel like they easily manipulate my partner. While I want to be supportive and understanding of the fact that they are dealing with their parents divorce, I can't shake these emotions and it's affecting our family dynamics. I feel guilty about these feelings, and I worry that they could damage my relationship with my spouse and the children. How can I work through these emotions and foster a healthier, more harmonious, blended family environment? Mm. Kids. Um, nah. Uh, that's tough, though, because when you're dealing with other people's kids, 
Um, it's always a sensitive subject when yes. you're dealing with other people's kids because yes. you get cussed out by somebody's kid. And I'm trying to see, like, getting getting the vibe that the kids might live with them, mm-hmm. that's going to make it harder. Because people mm-hmm. usually going to take make sure their kids is good. So yeah. basically she's saying that she feels like the kids are manipulating her, her partner. Mm-hmm. Is it a female? Sounds like it. I didn't say if they was the female or not. Or his marriage, so yeah. His children. His children. And mm. then, yeah, I don't know. That's that's tough because kids are definitely going to try to isolate their yeah. parent. Absolutely. They're going to fight hard to isolate the parent so that they can get what they want. Yeah. Um, They don't care if the parents find love, happiness, none of that. I would say, I would say, to talk to your your partner. Mm-hmm. I would I would advise her to talk to her partner and come at it with as much respect as you can. Because remember, mm-hmm. it's their it's their child their children. Even when people got bad behind kids, some people know they got bad kids and they still don't want you to tell them they got bad kids. That's true, right? So, not saying that these kids are bad. I'm just saying that. Whatever you do, when you have that conversation with your partner, just make sure that you address it in a sensitive way. You know, just, you know, with with their emotions in mind. You know what I'm saying? I think you got to um, find be your honest role, your actual role. With the children? Yes. Yeah. Because if the father has full custody of the kids, mm-hmm. that raises other questions on the other side. That usually doesn't happen. So True. if he has full custody... And you are in his life. I think that y'all gonna have to have a conversation that you need to actually step in that role as the. Or can mom. you step in yes. that role? You know what I'm saying? Because that's another thing. Like you said, what is the role? Because you're gonna need some authority, right? And he's gonna have to be the one to give you that authority. Absolutely. But that's why I said have that conversation with him first, mm-hmm. and then figure out a way where you both can talk to the kids and let them know that y'all are a team. You're not against them. Mm-hmm. But you are a team, and you will be helping to make sure that the everything runs properly, basically. Yeah. So, like you said, finding that role—that's a good, uh, that's a good way to. You got to define it, yeah. like all the way. Like, what am what are, what can I do to discipline them? Mm-hmm. What you know, like, am I gonna go full blown stepmom, mm-hmm. or what am I just doing? gonna be, yeah, you know, helping from time to time? But if that's the case, then I need to know where I stand with you right and do you want to take that role though that's another Correct. question because some people they don't want to take the role of a step parent they kind of just want to be but it seems they like leave, live but in the house with you though. i was gonna say it seems like she's involved yeah. enough with that she, or at least she wants to be involved um but i'm not quite sure if she wants to be so it's kind of like do you want to be involved how much involved do you want to be and are you willing to be hated by them kids when you tell them the truth? <laughs> For real, like, are you okay with that? Because you probably will get some pushback because mm-hmm. if they're not getting what they want from you or your or your uh, partner, if they're not getting what they want from their dad because of you, they're going to have a problem with you. So just be ready for that and as well. And they're going to hit you with the, you're not my mama. Oh, yeah. Yeah, be prepared you to get that. your feelings hurt. For sure. <laughs> you can't be, you know, you can't, you got to have some thick skin when you're dealing with other people. Because I remember when my mom, when, <laughs> when she first, like, when she would date, and people tell me what, like, they'll be like, wash the dishes. No. I'm not washing the dishes. You wash the dishes. <laughs> my mom can tell me to wash the dishes. You can't tell me to wash the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to get some kids that ain't got no. I was in that situation once. I almost training the or though. They ain't got no respect for you. The only reason why I didn't, and I think in my situation it was worse because he was so much smaller than me. Mm-hmm. And I was 16, mm-hmm. you know, super attitude as a teenager. And here to go mm-hmm. this little dude trying to tell me, what I need to go to do, do some chores. And you're not my, f- what? Come on, man. No respect. Mm-hmm. No respect. And my mama was over there like, well. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's, that's, so that's the thing. Like, just, you got you to gotta figure out, like you said, where do you stand mm-hmm. with the partner? Where do you stand with them kids? Are you ready to be you know, cussed out by the kids. How old are the kids? Like all of these things, all of these things matter in, in how you approach this situation. If the kids are on the older side, you really got to be ready for it. You got to be ready to tussle. Mm -hmm. (laughs) If they teenagers. Yeah. 
you might, if you plan on sticking around, you might just have to deal with it for a couple of years because teenagers mm, can be brutal. But, but yes, but at the same time, those teenagers become adults that do the same thing. That's true. You're never going to stop being a parent. You know what I'm saying? You're never going to stop like needing your parent for something. It doesn't matter how old you are. Like I'm grown with with children and a whole marriage. I'm, I'm in a whole marriage and I still need my mother. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So those teenagers are just going to turn into adults that do the same thing that they've always done. I agree. So you need to, I, I would prefer, personally, I would prefer to handle that situation as early as I can mm -hmm. so that it is, you know, determined, like, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to be here for a minute, so y'all just need to deal with it. Yeah. This is how we going to do things. You know what I'm saying? I would also and if you put your when... foot down, are you going to keep it down? Like, how, how, authoritative, how authoritative are you? Yeah. I would question when, who came into the situation also. I think that matters. What do you mean? So were the kids already there and then you came in? Or were you there, something happened with him and the the mother of the children, and then they came in to live with y'all? But I don't think that really matters. I think it does. Because they've because always they're always they've always been his kids. No, no, that's not what I'm talking I'm talking about in the house. And now we're talking territory. Mm. Because if they were there first, they're gonna feel like this is mine. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if you I, were there first, they're gonna still feel like it's theirs, but you have say. a little bit more power because they're coming into a house that you were already in yeah i don't think so though see I, i'm gonna tell I you I, because i'm gonna tell you as a, a stubborn prideful teenager mm -hmm. i don't care where i'm going this is my mom so it don't matter where we go i don't care if we walking into the timbuktu's palace it doesn't matter that's no there's no such thing as that but i'm saying i don't care where we going this is my mom well see i get that what i'm saying is in my situation when i was in it we went into someone else's home. So there was still at least a tiny bit of respect for the fact that I went into your house. You just said you had no respect. Minuscule. That you was said probably none. That was probably the only piece and the only, <laughs> probably the only reason why I didn't burn it down. <laughs> I couldn't stand that man. Mm. Like I couldn't stand him. So he could not tell me anything. But I, and I guess I more so mean when we first got in. Mm -mm. Right? This is your home. We're coming in as guess i get what in, you're saying in my opinion i'm a guest okay i technically i'm I'm just staying here yeah you i don't live saying? here right right no i get that yeah i understand that but she's trying to regardless she's trying to um what i'm getting from the excerpt here is that she's trying to stop them from being manipulative they always gonna be that that's what i'm saying like it doesn't matter whether they at daddy house at mommy house mm -hmm their grandparents house it doesn't matter shoot our kids got both their parents and they manipulate both of us so they try to anyway <laughs> no but you know what though we make sure that they know we work as a team mm -hmm. i make that but they catch us slipping from time to time they do they with do. small things like a snack or something like yeah. that but they they do catch us yeah kids are gonna be manipulative mm -hmm. they're gonna try as hard as they can so deal with that part that's what, i think that's something you just gotta talk to your partner about right because they gonna keep trying and make sure y'all, like you said, where what is your role with your partner? How tight is how tight are, is your union? Because if it's not, then those kids are just gonna get away with they're gonna get away with. But if your union is tight and you let them know also that you working as a team, that you know you'll you have their best interests at heart. You're not trying to compete with the kids. You're not trying to you, you know make the you got to make the partner understand that you got to make them feel comfortable with you having a role of disciplining or telling their children something, mm -hmm. anything, um, and then determine the type of union that you guys will have. Is it going to be a strong union where we can discipline together and where I don't step on your toes, you don't step on mine, or is it because those are your kids? Are you going to like sometimes, you know, tell me I'm wrong in front of the kid? Like let's, let's create those boundaries so that we know, because we talk about this all the time before we had kids, we talked about, and I know it's different because not, they're not her uh, biological children, but neither here nor there, they're going to be a part of your life. You're going to be a part of theirs. And when me and you, before we had children, we were always discussing what type of union we were going to mm -hmm. have, how strong is that union, how we're going to be locked in, and we're not going to, like, I forgot what happened the other day, but one of the girls did something and they asked you for something. I forgot what it was, but for example, like Mari loves to wear her little um, Barbie heels, you mm -hmm. know, her little Tinkerbell heels or whatever those are princess heels. And I don't mind her wearing them because 
you know, she got, she, she's a little girl. That's what we did. We played dressed up all the time. I just told her, if you're going to wear them, make sure you have an extra pair of shoes. I'm trying to teach her young because your feet going to hurt, going to hurt. Mm-hmm. Right. So just have an extra pair of shoes. Well, you were like, no, don't wear those shoes because they hurt your little feet. They hurt her feet. And plus, I just don't want any anything that could even be considered any type of groan on my children when they leave the house. But the, but they're they're little plastic Barbie heels. It's well, definitely not it. considered grown. And it's little. But that's what we like. We won't agree on that because I was a little girl, too. And I know I didn't yeah, I've feel never been a little girl. So. Exactly. But but I also didn't want to step on your toes. So I told you not in front of the kids. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, well, I allow her to wear it because blah, blah, blah. But I just make sure that, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But we didn't do that in front of them because they don't need to see any type of loopholes. They don't need to see any type of weaknesses in our, you know, <laughs> in yep. the way that we discipline or in the way that we make decisions together. So I think that, yeah, definitely have a talk and, um, and, and, and listen to all the things we just said. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope that that helps. I mean, at least a little bit. Try it and see and let us know how it works out. Hopefully uh, you guys can get through that, that rough patch. Hopefully and we'll get an update for y'all. Yeah. And get a, and yeah. If, and once we get an update from her, we'll get an update, get an update to you guys. But yeah, hopefully you guys can live happily ever after as a one big family. That'd be cool. Agreed. Yeah. All right, so let's get into the first. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get into um, what we're going to actually, the the bigger picture of what we're talking about today, let's shout out to one of our um, our sponsors, which is one of our brands. <laughs> Just Move Supplements, y'all. If y'all don't know about it now, after listening to this podcast, I don't know what y'all listening to. Right. But these are the best, absolute best supplements on the market and side by side 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 by side us with anybody vegan or not ours are vegan Mm -hmm. let's go let's go taste for taste we got the best supplements on the market so just move supplements obviously it's a black owned brand Mm -hmm. (laughs) it is uh, family operated we also manufacture our supplements as well our black made black owned yes and uh, we're right out of houston texas yeah and what else oh uh, the they're nostalgically delicious that's how i like to describe the flavor they're they were inspired by all of the desserts that were my favorites growing up in the south mm-hmm. and making uh yummy desserts with my great grandma uh, with my great grandmother with her too but with my grandmother this really inspired that really inspired the flavors behind all of what we have today uh banana pudding Lemon pound, grandma's lemon pound cake, blueberry muffin, sweet potato pie, apple pie, chocolate cake, buttercream cupcake, and we're and and counting because mm-hmm. we're growing and we're creating more flavors um, constantly. But it's more than just a protein. Like we're really trying to build something for the culture and the community, and we're providing jobs. Um, we're not, it's not just a, a me and you thing. It's an us thing. You know what I'm saying? So every time you guys support our brands, it h- helps to elevate the brand one, and we can continue to create quality and even more quality as we grow because of your support. And also it just says a lot about how we stick together as a community. It helps us grow because we don't have anything. We as a community, as a, a culture, we don't have something like this this is a huge industry to be a part of Mm -hmm. and we have the tiniest percentage in it super tiny you know so this is a big deal guys when y'all support us y'all are y'all are doing more than just buying protein so just know that when y'all are buying the energy rush or the fat burners y'all are doing more than that y'all are also helping yourselves because the products work and they're delicious but you're also helping out the culture and the community. We're trying to build, we not trying, we are building generational wealth, but also cultural wealth. So And we're probably one of the very few supplement companies that actually make our own supplements. And we know what's in it. We order know. the ingredients. Yep. We do the mixing. The testing. We, we do it all. Yeah. Well, there's there's different testing processes, but we make sure they get tested and we test. And so we know what you guys are we our family drinks these every day. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like if it's safe enough for our family, then you know our it's kids. Our children, then you day. know you know what you know what we on. You know what I'm saying? 
So make sure to check us out. If you're looking for a protein or any type of energy drink or fat burner or anything like that, uh, check us out at JustMoveSupplements.com and we'll continue to grow the brand and add to the product lineup. So keep checking on us and keep supporting. We appreciate it. All right, let's get to our... Uh, hypothetical. <laughs> so Go we ahead. got a hypothetical for you KP is leading this one. The hypothetical... Because we get asked this question, you know, from time to time is, what would we do if we were single? Mm-hmm. And I, I would take it as our relationship ended and we became single. That's is it, just the only is it way that, that I see it. Okay, that's the only way, that's the only way we can see right. it, really. I was so gonna I'm going to kind of give it from a perspective that something just magically happened mm-hmm. and we find ourselves single in today's environment. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to just start it off and be like, this is a tough hypothetical okay. for me. Okay. Because to me, all roads are just going to lead right back to you. Aww. And And before anybody be thinking this junk sound cheesy or whatever, they got to understand. Don't I make ain't me never, cry. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> I ain't never dated. Right. You know what I'm saying? I have zero Same. baggage. Yeah. Right. So I've never dated before as an adult. I've been with this woman my entire adult life. Yeah. And I've been happy, so I've never had a reason to ever Aww. look anywhere else. Aww. And then seeing it through the lens of other people, yeah, it's not a life that I want. But let's get to the hypothetical and say it actually happened. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you exactly why I feel all the roads are going to lead back to you. One, we have three kids, right? Mm-hmm. So when people are worried about their baby mamas or baby daddy, like I'm going to tell whoever I'm talking to, yes, you have to worry about it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. If you throw it at me, I'm catching it. What does that mean? Be more specific. If you say you want to have sex, I'm going to say yes. Okay. Got it. Can't be no more specific than that. I got it. If Thank you hit you. me up at three in the morning and say, hey, I need you to come over, I'm coming over. Okay. This is just what it is. And okay. if I was with somebody, they basically have to be damn near a poly relationship. Mm. And on top of that, I still feel in my heart, I'm not signing no divorce papers. Oh, here we go. So you also have that part. <laughs> Okay. We don't we don't built too much. We don't been through too much. I ain't I ain't I'm not dealing with all that. Here you go. I'm just being honest. But you know that you can uh, first of all, let let me start my rant by saying this. I don't want to say rant, but let me start off by saying that my road would lead back to you too. <laughs> <laughs> um but I think that is really sweet. But also you can be separated or divorced and still work together because we have built a lot together. Okay, and I appreciate your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't agree. Yeah, I, dis- um, I, I definitely disagree, but yeah. I appreciate your opinion. But we, because we, I've always been very transparent with you and, and made it very clear to you that if anything ever happened between us, which I pray it never does, but if anything ever happened between us, that I would always be fair to you. Mm-hmm. And to my children and to myself. And you know what type of sentiment as well. You know what type of person I am. I'm Mm -hmm. not a vindictive person in any way, shape, or form. And I also feel like I'm blessed and highly favored. So there's no need for me to be grimy to anyone or anything. You know what I mean? And I would definitely never do that to you because although if we were to ever split, I would always love you. I will always love you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like that will never change. Mm. So my my person would have to worry too. You know what I mean? On top of that, we have businesses together. Yes. The bigger they get, to me, the worse it gets because I'm going to find an excuse to be where you at. <laughs> so if we opening up a new manufacturing plant, I'm going to be, if you you there, I'm going to be there. So, but then how would you, how would you even approach someone or how would you even, yeah, approach someone if you, if you know. were single? I don't know. Because I don't with, know where I'd meet With that them. in the back of your head, knowing that you always going to try to come back to me, then... Mm. Because I don't know where to date. What do you mean? I don't go out, and I, that wouldn't change. Target. Go to Target. Bunch of women shopping in Target. I use Instacart, though. Me too. <laughs> oh, you see that? Did you hear he said he used Instacart? What? And on one of our episodes, maybe we can find a flashback to play where he says that I always send him to the grocery store. But you do, though. I get sent to the store. That's one of my favorite. You don't get sent anywhere. No, no, no. 
because Instacart, I'm I'm the queen of Instacart, and you be like, I'll go get them, babe, and I say, no, babe, it don't take worry. like forty five minutes. I say, hold on though, because because this because this is where so you he, ain't you don't be sending me to. The I store? do not. I actually don't. You be like, let me be a great husband. Let me go and get it, Adrian. Am I lying? Let he me don't go. know. He knows. He's known you for years. Anyways. Adrian, you you'll be, be like, side. you'll be that. like, I can't let me, let me do. Can I be why, the best? Why that ever? face though? I don't even sound like that. <laughs> That's what you sound like, like, why is that? Can I be the best what husband and go get you some snacks? And I'll be like, babe, I could just Instacart. You're tired. You can just chill. That's how I sound. That's how I be looking. Yes. Cause you lying right now to the public. No, no, I'm not. Talking about getting sent to the store. I never send you to the store. I will Instacart in a heartbeat. I use Instacart though. I use Instacart though. I use Instacart though. We use Instacart for big stuff. But if she want like a bag of chips, I'm going to get, we're not going to spend $30 in delivery charges for a bag of chips. Right? Right. Okay. That's why I get more stuff <laughs> <laughs> than a bag of chips. If I want just a bag of chips, I find something else to get. But yeah, so why? I mean, that's what I tell the guys on my Instagram when they're when they're like, "Where can I find somebody like you?" I'm like, Target. <laughs> <laughs> go to Target. Go to Ulta. You know what I'm saying? Go to the gym. See, I'm not going to well the gym. The gym. But I ain't going to none of them other places. Um, coffee shops. On top of that, the whole dating situation is just bookstores crazy to me the whole talking getting to know people and having to do it but that's what dating is though babe i don't like that i don't either i don't ever want to have to do it to be honest with you and then on top of that a new person would just simply have too much to live up to Uh, there's certain things that you nobody else could give me right so when when somebody be sitting in here and they be doing these podcasts and they be like oh my my partner saved my life because I was going through this situation and they pulled me out of it. And I'm like, no, my baby actually saved my life twice that I can think of. When? There's two times in my life where I thought that I ain't want to be here no more. When? First one was a couple years after I finished hooping. Mm. When I decided to not play basketball competitively no more. And I don't think athletes ever get this, but I was lost. I ain't know what to do. Mm-hmm. I I only hooped from 14 to 25. Yeah. So that's it. Don't sound like that long, but that's 11 years of never focusing on anything else. Yeah. No, I get it. Right. And then now that's gone. And so now I'm sitting here like I don't know what to do. A couple years go by. Actually, it was a few years because we were in San Antonio, and I was just like, this this sucks. Yeah. I felt like we was doing the same thing every day, and not that I wasn't living a good life, I was, but it just wasn't it. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand. You know, and and when I thought about it was when you first went to L.A. Mm-hmm. And I had talked to you, and you don't even you don't even know what you said, but I think you can hear it. And you was just you were just telling me you love me, and I don't even think you knew why. And that right there was like, okay, okay, let me let me stick around a little longer. It ain't time yet, mm-hmm. especially because I would have had to go through steps to like do it. We didn't have uh, any firearms in the house at this time. Like, I would have had to go and, like, do it. And what ended up happening was you came and you said you wanted to move to L.A. Mm -hmm. That, like, it almost, like, gave me a whole new purpose Mm -hmm. because I had nothing. I ain't had no direction. I I knew where I wanted to go but had no idea how to get there. Mm -hmm. And being in San Antonio, it just felt, it was just kind of lost. Like Yeah. Just the hamster on a wheel. Yeah. Yeah. And that was too repetitive for me. So then once we moved to L.A., everything changed for me. Like, I had something new to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Even though it was still unknown, I didn't know what was going on. But it was fun now. Like, life started becoming fun again. Mm. Like, I ain't, because not knowing what I'm doing the next day, and I know some, yeah, yeah. it's like, that's. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I ain't have that in San Antonio. It was this monotony of doing the same thing. I lost my father. Next year, we lost a baby. Yeah. And it was like, it was just back to back things that I'm just like, this is, this is just ridiculous. Then I also thought that you would be better off without me. And I didn't think you would leave me. So I was like, well, then I just made a decision I would have left you you rather than, I would have rather left you than you to do that to yourself. Well, that was the only way I figured like, you can go do your thing. Because I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. That was the first time. Then the second time was after I hurt my foot. When yeah, it was, I know that much. And, and we had kids now. I thought that when we made more money, things would get better. It didn't. Mm. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. If anything, it got worse. Because now I'm like, 
here we go. Now we making money. Now all these other people ain't got none. So now I'm <laughs> the digging guilt. the hole. Yeah, we worse. went through that together. I think the guilt part mm-hmm. of being successful. And I and I thought every time I thought I was moving out of it, mm-hmm. I wasn't. I was basically lying to myself. Wasn't competitive. Didn't really care about anything really i was still going through like my husband duties and fatherly duties but it was just more so like i just know what to do so i'm doing it like autopilot yes yeah but me personally i'm I'm going through it mentally i'm just going through it and i'm like i'm tired yeah and i'm done yeah but now i actually have the means in the house t- to do it mm-hmm. now we have firearms in the house now i can literally just be like you know what this ain't it mm-hmm. and again here you come and you you just it's little things that you have done mm-hmm. like even something the other day when you were like i see you as a leader so now it's like oh lord <laughs> i can't go nowhere because who gonna leave my family if i'm not here mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's little things that when you have a good woman they put things on your shoulder that you can handle to give you purpose mm-hmm. and giving you purpose is one of the main reasons why i believe that if you feel like ending your life you won't because mm-hmm. there's something for you to do and I think that was also an issue that I told you that I was struggling with. Now we have some money in the bank. Now I started to understand that I had zero purpose mm. in life. Mm. Not being a father or a husband, I just had no purpose outside of, okay, let's say we had $10 million. I just got $10 million. I don't have a purpose of what I'm going to do, what I'm right. thinking about doing. Yeah. If I'm going to help people, if I'm not, I just, I, just I would just it. literally be a black man with a wife, some kids, and some money. And, and that's who I am. Mm-hmm. And that ain't who I wanted to be. Mm. So once I got the purpose of what I felt like I was supposed to do on this earth, mm. now that's when the competitiveness started coming back. Mm. Now when I go hoop, I'm trying to destroy everybody just running up and down the court. Like, let me shoot. I don't really care. Now I'm like, nah, the, the dog that's in me is starting to come back out. Mm. And that don't happen if it's not for you. So now I'm going to get with a new person in this so-called hypothetical. And if I get back in that place, they can't. they can't. They can't give me no purpose. Mm. That's not something that I don't believe that somebody I don't know can give me purpose. Not saying you can't give me an idea, mm-hmm. but you can't feel me. Mm. You know what I mean? You don't know what I've been through. Right. You don't know the things that trigger me. You don't know the things that's like what's some, something that's going to set me off yeah. and make me so upset. You ain't going to know how to calm me down because you don't know how to. <laughs> you don't know what I've been through to in order to say, hey, it's going to get better. You don't know that. Right. How the hell you, you don't know, know that? Me. Yeah, right. you don't know nothing about me. Yeah. So I've learned over the years that when you got a good spouse and you use that spouse correctly, mm-hmm. that is your purpose. Your family is your purpose. Mm-hmm. You just have to figure out around that, who are you? Mm-hmm. Don't get lost in just your family. Who are you, though? Right. And That's now I, I feel like I know who I am. Yeah. That's pulled me away from the edge. So now I got to go get me some new person don't know nothing about me that okay I got some money in my pocket now in the back of my mind do you want me do you want the money you know especially with this environment of oh I want a high value man and all this stuff Mm -hmm. it's it's tough out here for single people yeah and I don't want them problems I don't either I don't either I will say this though I've always I I'll I can always feel you I know We've been together for a long time. And, and when and also, I, I think I just have a gift of uh, empathy. But when I really love someone, when I'm really connected to someone like my husband, I'm mm-hmm. going to feel those things. And I am going to speak light into you. I am going to speak, you know, power into you because mm-hmm. you, you deserve that. I say that all the time. You are very powerful and you don't even know it. You trying I, to get some <laughs> I'm serious. I know how powerful you are and how powerful you can be. And that's why I continue to speak life into you. And that's my job as your wife. And see a new person ain't gonna be able to <laughs> That's my job. You're not gonna get that. And I and I feel like in the environment we have today, mm-hmm. even men don't value their spouse or, you know, like a real partner. And I'm talking a real partnership. I ain't talking about these people who get together for business. You, you're not going to accomplish a lot of the things that you are capable of accomplishing without a good partner. 
Yeah. Because this 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 is too much. We we're just getting started. Right. And to me, this is too much for one person. Yeah. So it was just <laughs> like I had to be CEO of all of this. It's this a is a lot of moving parts. Yeah. And it's stressful. And having somebody that I could delegate to that I know got my back. Yep. Ain't trying to screw me over. Yeah. Want to see me win because me winning is them winning. That's a different ball game. It ain't like just having business partners where, yeah, we win together. But yeah. at the end of the day, once we win together, I've already won now. I don't need you. Yeah. In this situation, we never stop winning together. Right. I'm always going to need you to keep winning. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's always going to be different if the situation is, is what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And then when you're dating, you got all these energies around you. You know what I'm saying? And and if you believe in energy or believe in anything spiritual, you know, the energy around you, you're going to you're going to absorb some of that. I was going to say, you don't even have to believe in it to feel it. Mm hmm. Oh, as y'all can tell, we got our kids at work with us today. As always. <laughs> that sounds like uh, somebody took somebody took, took something, something from me. Cry. Yeah. <laughs> but. It's it's just. The way people rely on social media and talk through technology now and all of this stuff. It's cold. It it's is, like real cold it? the way people communicate. Yeah. And they'll break up with you through a text. Like some people break up with you through an email. That's crazy. That's, crazy. That's wild. Like an email? Like damn. Yeah, you have no feeling. <laughs> you have no soul. <laughs> you say get cut straight to, mm-hmm. to business. Yeah. It's like they hit you with the Mr. Price. We're like, whoa. And it's a breakup letter and an email. Like, it's formal? <laughs> Dear John <Damn>. letter. <laughs> you know what I'm John saying? Dear so it's letter. like to get out there and there's so many phony people, especially, I ain't gonna lie, L.A. also tainted me. Bad. When it come to dealing with people. Bad. Don't trust nobody. Yeah. So then you, I got to sit here and deal with different people. When I find somebody I like, I still have to worry about trusting them. Yeah. Not just with my money, but with my myself. What happens if I go out and somebody try to rob me? One thing I do know, I could tell my wife, stay in the car and don't move. I know she coming with something. If she ain't got no gun, she going to get a brick. Period. She going to use the car. Period. She will hop in the driver's seat and run their behind over. I'm going to do what I need to do to save my Cause, husband. Cause, could I imagine being with a woman and all she going to do is scream? <laughs> all them screams don't help me. I'm getting my behind. I'm getting right. jumped. Right. And you screaming, no, don't hit them no more. They still hitting me. And You're not going to do gonna nothing. And they probably going to come after you, too. You didn't, you didn't call for help. You nothing. didn't do nothing. You just screaming. Like, yeah, I, no. you know. Nah, your wife coming with all the heat. Heck yeah, because all these men be out here like, oh, I can handle the situation. It's a whole bunch of men out here that get their behind whipped every day. A whole bunch of tough dudes. Yeah. You ain't too tough to catch your ass whipping. I'm just being real. No, right. So who you with matters. Yeah. And you're going on a date with your lady and you get into it with somebody for whatever reason and you on your own. Some women make it clear, though, that they're not going to have your back. Yeah, that's not the one. They make that me. very clear that, like, don't get in no fights while you with me. You better be the one to win, all that stuff. And I I don't just see you as my husband. I see you as a human being. You know what I mean? Keep working it. Baby. Like, <laughs> like I don't, I don't, I know that you have your own traumas. And I know that you have your own demons that you fight. And I respect every piece of your time. And every piece of you as a person. I don't expect you to be perfect. I don't expect you to be strong all the time. That's why I'm strong for you when you can't be. I don't expect you to be right all the time. I don't expect you. You you don't know. You you definitely don't. I I don't expect you to lead us the correct way all the time. There might be some bumps in the road, Mm -hmm. but that's what that's that's why we got seatbelts. You understand? Like Mm -hmm. I'm here. You know, and so I think that's why it is hard to have this type of hypothetical. It's hard to like be like, hmm, if I was single, because I can't see myself without you. The easy, the easy thing in these hypotheticals to be like, oh, I'll be a male whore. I'll do these things. I'll do all of this. When in reality, <laughs> I love my life. I don't want to <laughs> do any of those things. <laughs> you be mad at home. <laughs> be like I, you single now. <laughs> right, like it's because I we think like. Not- I think when you marry, you could get caught up in, you know, some of the stuff you see on social media, like, yeah, I'm going to go get this chick. Or if you got some money in your pocket, I'm going to go to this. I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. But the reality is I I really, really love my life. I like (laughs) coming home. And And you want to do stuff with me. Yes. And I want to do stuff with you. Yes. My kids are home. I love, I love like when, wherever they at in the house, when I come home, daddy's home and they run into me. Like, 
no, I I love my life. So yeah. to sit here and like a lot of it would be lying if I would be like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go to uh to where all the young club. niggas at. And then what I'm going to do is <laughs> I'm going to get me about five chicks. I'm going to beat them all, <laughs> right? And then I'm going to just send the ass home. You know, like that's that's like, what you want dudes to say because everybody want to be macho. Yeah. That ain't what I want, though. There's different there's different descriptions of macho, though. <laughs> you know? Like, it's so funny because whenever I used to go out with my friends, go dancing and stuff, I would have a good time. But then I'd be like, okay, I'm ready to go home to my husband. Mm-hmm. I'm... I want I want my husband. I want to go home. You know, wow. She just laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Slide through. <laughs> I know Vince, Vince, my brother. I call him Pooh. He used Level to three. always he used to always tell me, "Man, you don't never go out. You don't do this. You don't do that. Yo, Key got you locked down." And he he never understood that. It's not that she had me locked down. I don't want to do those things. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go out. I don't yeah. like to hang out at no club or a lounge. Mm-hmm. Now I'm I'm more private. I like to hang out on my patio. Right. You know, if I got the fellas over at the house, we could chill out and watch the game or chill out on the patio, chop it up or whatever. Mm. But I don't like being in loud environments. I don't like being in environments where people be fighting and all that because I like my peace. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I was younger, yeah, we'll go to a party or something. If they start fighting, we get the popcorn out like, ooh, this is good. But even when we was in L.A., we, we had already stopped because mm-hmm. we went to the one party. Yeah. The one time we decided to go out, they shoot the club up. Yeah. And we was like, you know what? Maybe we should have just went to dinner. Definitely should have just went to dinner. You know, so being, being, I guess, quote unquote, boring or square has its perks yeah. when you want to relate. Because if somebody look at me now, they'd be like, I'm square. I'm okay with that, though. I don't drink. I don't do really anything socially other than work. You know what I'm saying? So, But this is what I like. So in order to be single, now I have to go outside of that and go find somebody. Yeah. I don't like none of that. Yeah. I don't like none of those like pros- prospects. And Sounds then the like whole one night stand type of things that people be talking. None of that junk sounds fun to me. But I think that it's easy for people to come up with hypotheticals, too, when they're not happy in their situation. Because Absolutely. then you're always imagining what life would be like in, if a, you different, were happy. in a different scenario. Yeah. And then you always think you'd be happy doing something else when yeah. more than likely that ain't going to make you happy. Maybe, either. though. Maybe it will. It just depends. If you're not happy, like if we weren't in a happy marriage, then it would be easier mm-hmm. to ha- to have a whole bunch of hypotheticals, what we would do, what we wouldn't do. Um, but I've been around some very wealthy men mm-hmm. who were also very unhappy. So I know a lot of men out here would be thinking like, man, if I had 30, 40 million in the bank, mm-hmm. I could have all these women. Well, I've met some of those men. And I'm not saying they all are unhappy. Some of them like that lifestyle. Yeah. And then there's a, a large amount of them who did not. They're looking for a wife. Yeah. They don't want these chicks around they're them. They're scared to get one. Cause Correct. They they don't trust anybody. Correct. Yeah. And it's like, so I, I kind of can see both sides. I've seen the happy bachelor. Yeah. I've seen the unhappy bachelor. Yeah. I would be the unhappy <laughs> version. Because I like the quiet life. I like my vac- vacation. I like going to the beach and chilling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't I'm not gonna go to Jamaica and then be at the Jamaican club dancing all night. I would definitely do that though. You've seen me do that. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen me. But you me. you like to dance. Right, I right? Know. And you did it at the resort. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it's like okay, cool. That I took my husband to for his birthday. <laughs> Which I overate there. Again. As well. Again. <laughs> literally stuffed like a little piglet like that was I the worst one though it. that was the worst one in a i literally time. was like go in the room get your life together and i'm gonna go dance because what you're not about to do is have me up in that room because you Aki stuffed was like too a pig good. you ate everything every <laughs> y'all <laughs> he ate everything i was eating Aki and dumpling the whole time i was there though it was just a lot of it, it was so good it was it was phenomenal shout See, out then to i gotta the, go do that with shout a new out person? to jamaica for Shout out to our second, our, our other home, I'll mm-hmm. say, because that food was incredible. And then on top of that, this is what's crazy to me, too. I want to travel more. Mm-hmm. Then I have to go find somebody to travel with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can only travel, and, and this is just me, you can only travel so much with your boys. Yeah. Like, please. I, I, I love the dudes that I'm close to. I ain't trying to go to Jamaica and, and chill at the resort with my fellas. Like, we go to Vegas, we hang out, we chill, we have fun. Mm-hmm. I ain't trying to go to Jamaica and do that then with you. Then you be calling me. Correct. <laughs> I'm going to call you at night anyway. Because then I, what's going to end up happening is we we going to be single. And we'll be like, baby, I'm going to go to Jamaica with this chick. And see, see, I still called you, baby. Yeah, you're going to be like, like wait, that oh, I hope y'all have fun. And then what's going to happen at night? <sighs> 
I would hope hey, that, that I would hope that that wouldn't happen at night if you're <laughs> I'm gonna taking call you. a woman to I, cause a I know romantic what it's gonna, destination. I know what it's going to be in my mind. And again, this is a hypothetical. I just can see how know. some women are. It's already hard enough to just find somebody you like. We're not even talking about love now. We're mm-hmm. talking about just being out there. And, and anybody watching this that's single mm-hmm. can attest. It's hard to find somebody you just like. Mm-hmm. Like, I like you. Not saying I like the way you look. Mm-hmm. Like, I like you and I like being around you and I want to be around you. Mm-hmm. That's already difficult enough. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to put myself in a position to be, because everybody be like, oh, you can, you know, you can just handle business. You can have sex. Okay. And then that, what about before and after that? I still got to deal with this person. Yeah. What if it's not good? What? Oh, gosh. And what if their personality is dry? Because, you know, I'm fun. Mm-hmm. And I'm silly. I like to laugh. And and then what if they just. I'm adventurous. I like to do things. What if they just dead fish in it? Not dead fish in it. And it's like, and for those of you who don't know, that just means they just lay there and don't do nothing and it's just boring. And there's there's a whole bunch to the scenario that I can make it horrible. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, obviously, make, it can be good. It's or possible. Yeah, I was going to say, are you making a good scenario? It's just in my mind, I got I got too much going on up here to deal. And then I got to deal with their baggage because more than likely, they've been in the dating game. Yeah. This This right here is rare. Yeah. To have someone, even even if we were back on the market, but to be with somebody that's only had one partner, that's right. only been married one time, yeah. that all their kids are with the same person and yeah. they decided to not be together no more, that's not something that's easy to find. Usually by the time somebody hit 30, they done been in. I think it's intimidating too, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, by the you, time you're 30, you, you, you done would... been in multiple, situ- whether, whether sex was involved or not, but you just dealt with multiple people mm-hmm. in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. Now you're talking about somebody who's. I only know one one thing one way. Yeah. My house has been ran one way. Yeah. For 25 years. Yeah. So if I'm a little bit messy and you a little bit messy and I hate my house being dirty, <laughs> that don't work. <laughs> you're childish. <laughs> but you know people are very particular about their home. You are. Yes. And you're. It's so funny, y'all, because he is. He loves a clean home. I don't want to clean it. But he don't want to clean it. He's I love messy. the bed being made. I don't want to make it. I know. Like, you love, like, I, and I'm, I am that one that I love to get up and make sure the kitchen is clean in the morning, mm-hmm. make sure the house is clean before we start work, make the bed, open the blinds, light the candles. <laughs> and then I think the other part of the, of, the, of the hypothetical that may be a little weird for some people that they don't know is that, like I said, I'm not signing no paper so guess where i'm living in the other half of our house i'm i gotta be where my kids are they can't be without daddy what that's not a thing why are you just looking at me that's not a thing no and then okay again i'm not signing no divorce paper so half of everything is still mine so then there's still like when she gets somebody and they going in a car that we own because we would own it i told you the front and rear passenger seat is mine so he would have to sit behind you that's the only place he could sit in your car he can't sit in my seats that's so crazy that i'm just being honest those my seats he can't sit then in I my just seats. buy me another car that's still half mine so the, I take the front I passenger like he would be the and the worst front rear. I mean, the back, the, the <laughs> passenger <divorcee> rear. <laughs> ever. Like, I would be like, I walk up to him and be like, Hold on. He, he getting in the car. Nick, what you doing getting in my seat? He'd be like, what you mean? You sit behind her. That's These are these two seats are mine. And I feel like you would be petty like that. I, I really absolutely do. would. And I hate that for you because <laughs> that's not fair. I wouldn't do that to you. That is not right. I'm just saying. Why would you? You said you wanted me to be happy. I mean, I think all men say that. No, but we mean with no, us. No, they don't. You said me. no matter what. I you want, want you to, to be, be happy, happy with me. But you don't mean that though. But if you're not, if you're not with me, I still want you to be happy, but with me. If I'm not with you, exactly. you still want me to be happy, yes. but with you. I think that makes perfect sense. It makes none. Just like when you ask for a burger without onions and add the <laughs> onion ring. <laughs> the waitress was like. Okay. <laughs> That's a different type of onion, though. I know. It was funny, though. It's still an onion, though. That's why it was funny. And a bigger <laughs> one. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think it'd be more so. I think you would be the worst person to. Yeah, I think I'd be all up in your business. Like, that's not fair. 
But I wouldn't do it on purpose. I'd just be around. You're saying it right now, so you would do it on purpose. Because I'm going to be at the house where my kids are. So, okay, oh, we good. homeschool so then, the kids. So, right, good. So you're, so you're No, we still going to have a nanny. Don't do that. <laughs> so when I want to go on a date, you can watch the kids. No. Yeah. I'm not going on. I'm not watching no kids while you go on a date. What are you going to do? You're not going to be weird. with your children? No, I'm just not watching them while you go on a date. That's that's not my responsibility. You're going to have to get your mama and somebody to do that. That's not fair to me. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Anyways. You're going to hit me up like, babe. See, babe. I need you to watch the kids. Speaking of our so kids. I can go on a date. Speaking of our kids, make sure to check out pageatandamari.com. <laughs> Named after our first two children, we uh, have a clothing brand. We have two, actually. But we have Peja and Amari, mm-hmm. which is in the process of being revamped right now. So I'm excited to share the new relaunch. And I'll probably have, like, a clothing rack. When y'all see that clothing rack out, y'all will know that Peja and Amari has been relaunched. But for now, we still have some great gear in there. We have some cute fitness wear. We have some casual wear that you can have. Like while you're running errands mm-hmm. or going out on cute little brunch dates. We have all types of stuff. So make sure to check it out. We have accessories, all that stuff. So check out Peja and Amari dot com. That's another one of our brands. And then um, I just want to shout out your shirt real quick. Oh, my shirt. Just move supplements. It's again. so cute. This yeah. was our Juneteenth edition. Yeah, I love that shirt. It's still vibey. Like it's a I vibe. I know our people still oh. struggling with Juneteenth, but hey, we need something. It's a vibe, though. The whole yeah. shirt is a vibe. Shirt so make dope. sure to end the quality this vinyl is crazy yeah it's very beautiful so shout out that's your design adrian right yeah i helped it's the mo- it's I'm, the, I'm one of them okay. i'm taking cre- everybody credit Look, it's the multi-talented <laughs> family for me uh it's beautiful so check that out too if you are interested in any of the apparel that we have uh for just move supplements go to just move supplements.com and rep it rep your favorite uh mm-hmm. brand you know what i'm saying all right sorry I All right, real, real quick, since my brother is here and he has dated, are you oh friends with God. any of your exes? He said yes. Okay, so that's a yes. Do you still see any of your exes? Do you every see her day. and talk to her every day? See? Why? That's not weird. Why do you talk to her every day? He with me, y'all. He with me. That's his person. That's what he said. Well, then why? That's that's his person. So then why aren't you together? But sometimes people just grow apart for a little bit and need to come back. You know, like plants split up and then, you know, they come, you know what I mean? No, like, I things don't. Things happen. I suck at plants. <laughs> so I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's with Kevin. Okay. I, I don't think nothing I said is... Out of the rut, because I I guarantee you, mm-hmm. if we ask any long term married men who really care about their families, they're gonna agree with me. I do want you happy with me, even if you're not with me. And it he's may not nodding make sen- his head yes. Right, that makes I sense, don't it? You see what I'm saying? It makes sense. Okay, well we're gonna have to ask the guys in the in the in the uh, social media world. So that's the scary thing about the social media world, because then they're gonna be like, "You simp." I'm like, "No, you can't simp with your wife." Right. It's impossible. She's supposed to be on a pedestal. Period. And then the next dude that's going to come along, he's going to try to compete. And I'm like, bro, you really can't <laughs> compete. Okay? Okay, because I could, I could just, we just start telling stories, and they're going to be like. Looking crazy. Yeah, because I'd be like, yeah, remember when uh, such and such happened? We over there. So I don't understand <laughs> why y'all not together if y'all talk every single day. That's crazy to me. It's not time. <laughs> but not. Okay. Well, I ain't wrong in my thinking. I guess. All, when I guess you all find your person, you got to keep your person. I understand that. I understand that. So then again, this hypothetical. We would end up being back together. <laughs> the hypothetical of being single for a long-term married person Trash. is like a horror movie. <laughs> well, if you were in a happy. Happy. Because if you weren't, like there's people that be throwing divorce yeah. parties. And there's people like, that so be excited like. excited to be. So don't excited. don't get divorced. All she do is take your money because that's the new thing that's going around. I know you've seen a little thing where they let their wife in the car and they be walking around. They be playing, but, mm. you know, people be cheerleading that. And I be like, ain't no real married man worried about no wife taking their money. At all. I, this is this is teamwork. So when I make money or she make money, it's just all going to the same pot. Right. It ain't no I pay no bills and she pay these amount of bills. And this. 
the bills get paid. Period. That's it. It's all of our money. Yeah. I ain't holding on to no money. She ain't holding on to no money. Yeah. It, if a car note get, need to get paid or she want to get a new car, it all come out the same pot. Yeah. So all that stuff. That's to how me is we weird. work, though. Yes, that's how we work. Everybody's different. Yeah, all that that's other stuff. That's how we work. It's weird to me when people be like, I work and have my own money in my marriage because when it, when it all come down to it, mm-hmm. if we both work and I got half a million dollars in my bank account and you got a hundred thousand dollars in your bank account, the judge gonna say, y'all make sure that's six hundred thousand dollars total, three hundred each. Yeah. That's what they gonna say. So it don't matter. Y'all married. Yeah. So if we not a team, what's the point of getting married? That's in my opinion. I don't understand that. Yeah, everybody different. Everybody move different. I'm only going this this is a partnership. Yeah. Right? So if you have a partnership and you run it like a business, when you have a partner, you got to be straight up with your partner. Mm-hmm. You can't lie about the business to your partner. Mm-hmm. You have to keep them up to date on everything that's going on within the business. I agree. That's the way you if for the people who be like, "Oh, marriage is a business." Mm-hmm. That's the way you work with a partner. Right. And they should do the same with you because if there's a financial issue, both of y'all need to know. If there's an issue with uh, a customer or anybody outside of your partnership y'all need to know it's no difference to me yeah so in my opinion hypothetically being single is is a nightmare <laughs> that's that's first and foremost regardless of how many i baby, have same. or don't have there's there's pros and cons mo- more cons than anything that i see the only thing that any man could say if they had a lot of money you you might have some more quiet time that's about it because my life is very loud Mm. that's it that's it and that's that to me every time my house get quiet i get upset yeah i was gonna say because you when the girls be gone you be like hmm, i miss the noise you want the noise but and i also give you your space mm-hmm. like i'm very good about that because i know you are a loner you're a solo type person yes uh, although you love being with me but you also like to be alone and i respect that but too. the last time i was in vegas I was on the phone with you. Yeah. We were we went to for my brother's bachelor party. We'd go do an event or something and then I'm on the phone with her. Yeah. That's that's my life. So that's what would, I like. You was thanking being single. Oh yeah. yeah. I'd be with you. <laughs> we be back They'd be like, together. Oh, y'all married? So either you're gonna be with me or we're gonna be together. Basically. <laughs> Cause they'd be looking at us like, Oh, these y'all kids? I'd be like, Yeah. Oh, y'all together? No. So they'd I can holler like, at her. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> they be like that's you right yes and no <laughs> they be like this couple get on my nerves they're very confusing and weird either way we're gonna work it out baby yes cause I'm gonna be with you and you're gonna be with me that's it and we're gonna be together that's it <laughs> alright speaking of working things out let's talk about workout of the week what's the workout of the week this week my, my workout of the week my workout that I enjoyed this week cycling I did part one and a uh, video one and video two mm-hmm. of our ride out series from our online gym. If you can move dot com. That's another one of our brands. Another one of our businesses that you guys can check out. We are an official tech company. Yes. We have a fitness app that you should definitely download. You can download it on iOS or you can download it on Android. It doesn't matter. Just go to your app store and go to If You Can Move, download that thing, sign up, become a member, and get your life with these workouts because we have amazing workouts. We have so many different types. We have such a variety, so many modifications for all fitness levels. If you are interested but you feel like, oh, I never worked out before, we got something for you. If you are a workout buff and you work out all the time and you feel like you got it down pat, we got something for you. If you feel like you're right in the middle, like I work out sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I don't, we got something for you. If you're a dancer and you love to get your sweat on with dance, burn calories that way we got something for you if you love your calisthenics lifting weights toning uh yoga pilates pretty much everything cycling walking we have something for everybody we have something for everybody 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 so make sure to go to if you can move.com but that's my workout of the week the cycling the ride out series um video one and two that was my favorite Mm. workout of the week what about yours my workout of the week was uh Oh my gosh! From the online gym. Oh oh um. Oh, what we did. <laughs> um. I don't know. I'm always on to build your own. Yeah. That's mainly what I stick with. Did you try a different one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one did you try this time? Um. 
it was a it was another one with uh like more push ups and squats in it. Well, I actually built it this time. Oh, oh, you built your own. Yeah, I actually Cute. built because we have pre made. We call we still call it build your own, but there's some pre made. But this combo. time I actually put one together myself, mm -hmm. and I I just enjoy that because I like I prefer calisthenics. Yeah, now. but don't don't just like glide over that. Like that's a big deal as a feature on an app on a fitness app to build your own workout. So basically. Mm -hmm you can choose the type of workout you want to do, but you can build it according to your mood that day yep. or according to your energy level. You so know what I'm saying? if you want to do all upper body, you could pick all upper body moves. Mm -hmm. You can pick the time in between uh, sets. You can pick number of reps, Yeah, all that stuff. And you can kind of just, you know, manipulate it to the point where you're happy with it. You can challenge yourself as much as you want, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. And you can still put music behind it. You can put your own playlist. Mm -hmm. So I love that because I, I – some days I might want to listen to, you know, some R&B while working out. Some days I might want to be super hype and listen to some ratchet music while working out. Uh, you can do either one and yep. you can still do the same workout if you want to, but it has different energy to it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I love that. I only listen to R&B when I work out. So. Yeah. So make sure to go to ifyoucanmove.com and check out our mm -hmm. Or our if you can move app. in iOS or android store yeah and we're constantly growing we're constant we have a, over a thousand workouts can you believe that mm -hmm. we something like that this. is crazy it's crazy plus we're growing we just added four we're we're adding four new series coming up that's a lot of videos mm -hmm. right so the couples somebody, somebody making chitlins in there <laughs> the couples like silly the couples olympics uh is dropping Actually, when this episode drops, the couples, couples Olympics series is dropping on the same day. Oh, so okay. Dope. That's exciting. Yeah. So if you guys didn't get a chance to see our couples Olympics, it's basically a fun workout where you get to uh, heighten your strength, get your endurance up, build your stamina and your bond at the same time. So mm -hmm. it's super cute. And that drops the same day as this. Um, what else? We did our speak on it. That's it for this episode because we wasn't it. breaking it all up for this episode. Yeah. So that's all y'all get. Yeah. Also, um, make sure that you guys share and like our posts because that's the only way that we can mm -hmm. grow. Um, Follow this podcast yes. on anywhere you listen to your podcast. Mm -hmm. um, please leave a review. Yes. And it better be positive or I'm going to find you. <laughs> Or um, else. <laughs> nah, if you don't like it, that's cool too. Let us know what you don't like. Or let us know what you want more of or less mm -hmm. of. You know. Any of the good stuff. Yeah. Or and we're going to have way more guests. Uh we're we're still working on line making sure we line everything up for every episode, mm -hmm. but we're gonna we're gonna keep giving y'all very, very valuable content. Adrian, what's the code for the week? Single life. <laughs> single just single single all that's right. the code all right so the code for today guys you got 48 hours you're not gonna always be able to do this now because as we grow we ain't gonna be able to keep doing these sales or maybe yes we are we are we can do it for our listeners but then the podcast get too big no we, we got we'll y'all we got, we got yeah, yeah 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 so you got 48 hours now it might not be 48 hours that's true you know what i'm saying because y'all be wiping us out Okay. That's true. And that's a good thing. But uh, 48 hours to use the code SINGLE, S-I-N-G-L-E, um, for 20% off. JustMoveSupplements.com. PageAndAmari.com. You don't need that discount because you already have a 70% off. And then um, TeamLachey.com is also another one of our stores. Speaking of our online gym, we have fitness accessories in there mm -hmm. that you can definitely benefit from, like the resistance bands, the booty bands, sliding discs, gloves, jump ropes, waist snatchers, drip cream for the belly, for the sweat, all those, all types of stuff. Sweat tanks, that's one of my favorites. Yes. Amazing. No it's hot. Like Daniel said, amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Daniel from Wife Swap. Anyways, check that out. As well, teamlache.com. It'll be 20% off in there as well. And then say it loud. Say it loud is. Say it dash loud. Say it that loud. Say it that loud. That. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say it, babe? Say it dash loud.com. Because clearly I can't today. <laughs> say it that loud. That, that. All right. So say it dash loud.com. 20% off there as well. That is our black. That's our black excellence brand. It is our 
statement brand that highlights black excellence all day, every day. He usually wears Say mm-hmm. It Loud. I decided to switch it up today. Yeah. So check that out as well. I think that's it, babe, right? Yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for listening and tuning in. And I really appreciate your vulnerability today. I really do. You know, I love when you tell me what you're feeling. And I'm glad that I was able to be such a big part of your that I am able to be such a big part of your life. I appreciate you letting me in. I appreciate you letting me in. All right, guys. We're going to go. Thanks so much. Follow us on (laughs) social media. And, yeah, we'll see you and talk to you next time. All right. Peace, y'all. Peace.